Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. I hope you're having a good weekend. I hope you're looking after yourselves and enjoying it. Uh, apologies for sort of the, the MIA in videos. I've not been very well, so uh, you're going to have to let me off the hook just this once, all right? We're jumping in a little bit today, talking about players in, players out, as per. And we're definitely talking about a first-team player who's played a lot of football at Spurs over the last few years and why he may be leaving. Talking about a little bit about centre-back's position, sort of an update on the tap sober, Mickey van der Ven pursuit. We're also going to be talking a little bit about a long-standing interest in a different centre-half and a new centre-half. So it's all a little bit exciting. So let's jump straight in with the main man himself on the thumbnail, Pierre-Emile Hoiberg. So... Pierre-Emil Hoiberg has been a constant in the Spurs team over the last three seasons. He's only missed five games. He's played 145 times. He's been a really key cog in that midfield. He is subject of interest from Atletico Madrid. And I think there's a... And this is only what really what I've seen on social media. There's definitely a ambition to get him gone, to cash in on him. But I think we, at the same time, need to understand that He's never really been injured. We should be looking at this as a situation where we go, but can we get good value from him? If we can, then yes, I can understand cashing in. But if we can't and we're going to get 20, 25 million, is it really worth it? Is there a player in mind that is going to replace him? I talked earlier on this summer in a different video where we spoke about how Spurs are still interested in a number six slash number eight. I know that... Basuma looks like he's going to be the number six with Skip uh, backing him up. So is Hoiberg a number eight going box to box? Obviously, you've got Benton Core, who's our best midfielder. You've also got Madison, who's come in this summer as well. You've also got Ndombele, who, if you've not been sort of paying attention to any videos or anything like that, yes, he may not be playing against that many first team players, but he is shredding it in, in training. Honestly, unreal what you can watch from that guy. If he had 25% more drive and 25% more dedication he, he could be world class genuinely he's unbelievable what he's doing um but in that being said we would still need another player Bentacore still obviously coming off a very big injury we would need something else to come in there if we were to let Hoiberg go you know if Hoiberg is a guy that doesn't get injured doesn't really miss game time you would need someone to come in there that's going to be able to replace that right so it came from Ben Jacobs that Spurs will accept a suitable offer for Hoiberg, who's wanted by Let's Go. And I sort of had a look on transfermarket.co.uk uh, and they sort of value him uh, last updated on June 20th at 45 million euros. So about 38 million pounds. If you're getting anywhere between 35 and 40 in your own head right now, do you think he's worth that? For me, he's only worth that if there's a player in mind that you're going to replace him with. If you're going to be selling him for the same sort of value you're getting for James Madison, what are you bringing in to give yourself a bit of depth in that position? Now, you've got to remember, they always talk about this whole two per position, Lark. When in a three-man midfield, you need six players. So let's go Madison, Benton, Corp, Basuma. That looks like it's going to be the main three. Skip, Ndombele. Is Papa Matasar there? To yourselves, do you think that's a good enough midfield? For me, I, I would if we're going to be cashing on Hoiberg, I'm going to need someone else in there that's going to come in. Especially if Bentacore is going to take a little while to get up and running, you're going to be relying on other players. And as much as I'm, I'm excited to see Ndombele, I'm excited to see the progression of Pape Matassar, for example, I feel like we need a bit more. So that's just the update on Pierre Hoiberg. Moving on, just a little quick update from Fabrizio Romano about the Tapsoba van der Ven situation. He said that Tapsoba remains the top target. He has always been super appreciated. The deal depends on Bayer Leverkusen's decision on final price tag, but Spurs still want Tapsoba. They keep negotiating with Van der Ven because in the end, the price may be better. And that's kind of it. I've always said my opinion. I'm not going to spend long on this. I think Mickey Van der Ven suits the team a bit better because of the left foot plays on the left side. But I do believe Tapsoba is the best of the two. You see what I mean there? Also, Van der Ven's cheaper, which will suit Levy's pocket as well. So, again, I believe it always should be two of them. It shouldn't be one of them and Longley. I believe it should be two of them. But, hey, I'm not the guy who makes the decision, unfortunately. And we all know in the comment sections of other chats that I've had with other people on this channel, you know how we don't super appreciate that idea that it's only one of them and Longley. If Longley's coming in, these two should be coming in first. So, 
Hey. Um, looking at from John Person Telegraph, he's... I don't really want to talk about this too much, you know. He says the Spurs is interested in Max Kilman, uh, who recently had a bid rejected from for him from Napoli for 35 million euros. I just, you know what I mean? It's just a bit... I don't see it happening. I thought I'd report it because I know some people who in other comment sections have talked about Max Kilman before. I don't see it happening whatsoever, if I'm honest. Um, fun, though. Uh, Maidenhead get a good, solid chunk of money out of selling uh, from Max Kilman. Uh, sorry, Wolf selling Max Kilman. I think they get something like, uh, if he was sold for about 35 million, they get about 6 million or 35 million euros, they get about 6 million. I think it's, it's, it's quite a good chunk of money and fair play to them. Fair, that, that would honestly suit Maidenhead and sort them out for years and, and probably a decade or two. So hopefully they get the deal because I, I want them to get the money. Why not? You know, cash in, lads. Talking about someone that's a bit fresh and new. So this came out from Sky Sports Germany. And it says Spurs have joined Napoli in the interest in Ko Itakura from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, the defender moved there from Man City last summer. Now, looking at uh, Ko Itakura, he's he's very highly valued across Europe. He's very well sought after. And Mönchengladbach, I always feel like, have this ability to bring in players that you just don't have any clue about and then turn into absolute players. So to give you an idea about Ko Itakura, he's 26 years old, plays centre-half, does play a little bit of defensive mid if necessary. Uh, he played 24 times this year and he played, uh, so he played 24 times in the league. I only played once in the cup, so I'm going to disregard that one. Did play 90 minutes in the cup if that helps you at any point there. Uh, two assists and a booking. He did, a, did he get two red cards, which I found quite interesting. Obviously, I don't know what the red cards are for, but one in every 12. Interesting. Um... He, he's a player that, sorry, just really quick, I was just trying to find it. He, um, he's got a contract that expires in 2026 and his market value is about 12 million euros. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, do you know what? I watch Mitch and Gladback every week. That Ed Secure is a baller. He's going to be incredible. He's going to be this, that, the other. I've always said, if this is a data-driven signing, I can understand it. And, and the whole thing with Scott Munn not being able to join the club because... The City group are holding up from their end is a joke in itself. And I know why they're trying to do it. It's not because they've overrun things and there's an issue. They're very much trying to hold him off to stop us help uh, getting help from him, right? Because obviously he's a very well sought after football name. If he is a data-driven signing, I'm all on board with it. And I have no issues with it. But he's not, in my opinion. I do think this is a bit of a spin, in, in, in all honesty. Because I do think the two main centre-halves are Tapsoba and Van der Ven. The other one's going to be Longley. We're going to call that a good day. And we'll say, do you know what? We brought two new centre-halves in. Not like one of them played last season at Spurs in a defence that was shocking at best. We need fresh faces at centre-half position. We need fresh faces across the back four. And I mean, don't get wrong, Adogi's coming at left-back, which I'm super excited for, uh, for him. Because obviously, you've got the players of like Ben Davies, who's probably going to float between centre-half and left-back, which is why I think Tanganga, Sanchez and Dyer could all go. No issues. Um, Dyer looks like obviously he'll probably stay and then go next summer. You've obviously got the situation with Sessegnon. Is he going to stay? Is he going on loan? Which I believe he'll probably stay. But it does look like that Perisic will have himself sort of bought out from his contract. And he looks like he potentially might be going back to Croatia, which, you know what? Fair play. Still a good player. It's just... It didn't really work. He came here for Conte and for six months, it really didn't work for him. The first sort of few months, he was incredible. Absolutely incredible. But it kind of looks like, especially in a back forward, it's not really his style. He's definitely better in a wing-back position where the, the other centre-half comes over to help if it's necessary. But anyway, guys, that's the little quick roundup of the transfer news. That's the end of the video as well. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Hit me in the comment section about the situation at Spurs. If Hoiberg was to go, who do you want to replace him? We haven't really got any news about that at the moment, so I'm always happy to see what people sort of fancy there. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, lads.